the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. The text for our meditation today comes to us from our Old Testament lesson from Exodus chapter 14, the account of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. We will read select verses. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the salvation from the Lord, which he will perform for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You must wait quietly. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. O Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. In 2003, a young man named Aaron Ralston went out hiking in Utah's Canyonlands National Park. He didn't tell anyone where he was going. As he was climbing a cliff, he fell. He unlodged a boulder, and that boulder fell on top of his arm, pinning his arm against the canyon wall. He had no way to contact anyone. No one had any clue where he was. That young man was out there for six days. He saved his water and his food for as long as he possibly could. He started hallucinating. He was literally stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that was the name of the book that he wrote years later. You might be more familiar with the movie that was based on this book, 127 Hours. Have you ever felt like you've been stuck between a rock and a hard place? No matter what you did, there is no way that you could get out. You tried this direction and that opportunity but it all came to nothing. It felt hopeless. And you might have begun to feel despair and even fearful. That's how Israel felt in our lesson today. Things should have been going good. In fact, the best thing that had ever happened to Israel in the past 400 years, they just got out of Egypt. They were released from slavery. Moses had come and spoken to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was reluctant to let his slave labor go. But after the ten plagues, which got worse and worse, and began to afflict only the Egyptians and the land of Egypt, Pharaoh finally relented after that tenth plague the death of the firstborn male all over the land of Egypt. There was great despair in the land, and Pharaoh said, Be gone. Leave you and your people, get them out of my country. Israel, on their way out of this land, they pillaged and plundered the land. Uh, the Egyptians gave them all of their gold and jewels and clothing. They gave them flocks and herds on their way out. As Israel left the land, rather than going directly to the land of Canaan to the north, God didn't want to lead them there because they would have been attacked by the Philistines immediately. Rather, he led them out into the wilderness. From Pharaoh and the Egyptians' perspective, it looked like they were wandering around aimlessly. And Pharaoh came to his senses, and he could not let his cheap slave labor just walk out of the land. And so he rounded up all of his troops, the army, the chariots, and chased after Israel. Israel fled in front of this army. Uh, they could not stand up against these trained soldiers. And this led them to a rock and a hard place. There in front of them was the Red Sea. Behind them were the armies of Egypt. 
They could not turn to the right or to the left. And they were despairing. They called out to God. Why? Why have you led us out here, Moses? We told you it was better for us to stay in the land of Egypt. Did we have to come out here because there weren't enough grave sites in the land? Now we have to be buried in the desert? These people had just seen their God decimate the land of Egypt. And now that they were in a tricky situation, they began to fret and worry and fear. Sounds like the life of a Christian, doesn't it? We so often have seen our God working for us and coming through for us, being victorious for us in an incredible way. And yet, when that next difficult situation comes before us, all we see is a rock and a hard place and no way out. We begin to fret and worry and say, Why, God, why have you brought me to this place that I cannot get out of? What purpose is this serving? And so we accuse God. Moses spoke to the Israelites on behalf of the Lord. And he encouraged them. He said, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the salvation from the Lord, which he will perform for you today. The Lord will fight for you. You must wait quietly. The Lord was going to achieve great salvation for the land, for the people of Israel on that day. The cloud that had been leading them in front of the people as they wandered through the desert now went behind them. It obscured the view of the Egyptian army so that they could not advance against Israel. And it kept that barrier there. They were protected from the Egyptians at this moment. God wanted his people to put their doubts aside and to trust wholly in him, to place their faith in him. And notice what he said at the end. The Lord will fight for you. You must wait quietly. Kind of hits home for us, doesn't it? You must wait quietly. That's not in our nature as a human being, as an American. We want things now, and if we don't get what we ask for, we're going to speak up. We want our mobile order to be ready for us immediately as we walk through the door of that restaurant. We want to be able to sit down on our recliner, turn on Netflix, and have that streaming start instantly. If we have to wait more than 10 seconds, we get frustrated Say, why isn't this working properly? Sometimes we have to wait quietly. We have to wait patiently in the circumstances of life. When bad things befall us, we want to be done with them immediately. We want that immediate fix. But often, that is not the case. Often, we have to wait. Rather than trying to struggle our way out to the left or to the right, we have to wait for our God to act for us. We have to be patient and realize that it is our own actions that so often gets us into that rock and hard place. And we must wait for our God to act. And our God does act with salvation. God told Moses to go out to the sea and to raise his staff above those waters. And what happened? The sea parted. Those waters began to go to the right and to the left, and there was a corridor of dry ground in between. A path 
that was not soggy, a path they could walk on, a path that animals and carts could easily traverse. And all through that night, the Israelites crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. The cloud, the glory of the Lord that stood between them and Egypt, it shone on them, it lit their way for the entire night, but it showed darkness to the Egyptians who had no idea what was going on. And Israel was brought safely to the other side. You must wait quietly. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord does open up paths for us. He has done so for us in the past, and he will continue to do so for us in the future. The Egyptians, once the cloud dispersed and they could see the slave labor escaping across the sea, well, Pharaoh would have none of that. And he chased immediately after Israel, sending his entire army across that corridor. But as night ended and daybreak came, all of the Israelites made it across. Moses lowered his staff. And the waters came sweeping back over that Egyptian army. Not one of them remained. The bodies were found strewn along the seashore on the eastern side of the Red Sea. Not only had God opened that path for Israel, he destroyed their enemies. And we know that is exactly what God has done for us. If we recall who we were when we were born into this world, we were born between a rock and a hard place. We were born into death and destruction, for that is what we inherited from our sinful parents. Salvation was not ours. But God saw the situation in which we were, and he rescued us. He created that narrow path of salvation out of that death by the working of his Son. By the death of Jesus at the cross, he has accomplished a way out, a path of salvation, one for the likes of you and me a path that we now walk. And, and behind us, we see our enemies have been destroyed. At the cross, Jesus accomplished the victory. The war was won. Sin, death, and the devil, our enemies, our mortal, immortal enemies, have been crushed by Christ. No longer do they afflict us. This victory is ours in Jesus. As the Israelites stood on the east side of the Red Sea, they celebrated. They raised their voices in joyous shouts. They sang a song to the Lord. Lord, you've done mighty things for us. You have rescued us from our enemies. And we can say the same. And as we go forward on this path in our life, we know the Lord is going to continue to rescue us, even if we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place yet again. We know that the Israelite nation far too often let doubt obscure their faith. They found themselves in difficult situations over the next 40 years as they wandered in the desert, as they conquered the land of Canaan. They turned their backs on the Lord again and again in doubt, not using their faith to trust God and His promises. May God strengthen our faith to look to Him. Obviously, I'm not here with you in church today. I'm over in Iowa assisting congregations as they clean up after the severe storms that they suffered last week. 
Imagine what it was like, what it is like for these individuals right now in Iowa. A storm came through and destroyed everything. Their house, their home, their businesses destroyed. And when they looked at the damage around them, they saw nothing but a rock in a hard place. I could go out and cut down this tree or cut up this tree that has fallen, but there's only 500 more. I could go clean up these few scraps of trash, but this entire block is littered with the belongings of my household and ten beside. What can we do? The Lord provides. The Lord uses His people. Christian Aid and Relief has set up this weekend specifically to come and help these people. Help this church and this community. A good Shepherd in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, we're going there not just to help the church itself and, and the members of that church, but the entire community. And God is using this moment to show everyone in this community that we do not have to remain stuck between a rock and a hard place. That the Lord does provide options for us to come out of these difficult situations. God uses his people like you and me to assist others through the difficulties that they are suffering. If you have seen the movie or, or read the book of this young man who got stuck in that canyon, you know that he had to take matters into his own hands and he amputated his arm in order to escape from his ordeal. Thankfully, when we find ourselves in difficult situations, we do not have to take such extreme measures because we know that the Lord is there. We know that the Lord loves us. He has assisted us in the past. He, has, he will assist us in the future. And we pray that we not let our human doubts obscure the fact that our God loves us and will rescue us. May God strengthen our faith always. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.